Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how the background eraser works. The background eraser changes the area you use it on to transparent. You'll find the background eraser tool in the toolbox with the other two eraser tools. You can click and hold on the eraser tool until the other erasers pop up. It's the one that has the scissors over the eraser indicating that you can cut things out with it and as you'll see you can. So I'm going to select that. One unique feature of this tool is that if the only layer you have is the background layer, which all photos do when you first open them in Photoshop Elements, as soon as you click on your photo with the background eraser tool it changes the background layer to a regular layer. So see in the layers panel how we have this um, padlock icon here that indicates that the layer is locked and it's called whoops there we go it's called background if I click anywhere on the photo with the uh, background eraser tool watch my background layer see how it changed um, from background it changed to layer zero now and we no longer have that padlock over over on the right side there. So that's a pretty unique feature to the background eraser tool, but I like to actually duplicate my background layer and work on that, so I'm going to undo that click by pressing Command Z on a Mac, or it would be Control Z on a PC, and you'll see it gets rid of the area where I clicked on, and it also changes my layer back to the background layer. And now I'm just going to drag that down onto the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. And it puts a copy of my background layer above the background layer. And that's the layer I'm going to work on, leaving my background layer untouched. And I'm going to turn off this eyeball by clicking on it so that the only layer that we're going to see is the background copy layer. Basically, the way this tool works is that when you click with it, it changes the area within the size of its cursor icon, which is a circle with crosshairs in the center, to transparent. So you can see when I click on this white wall, it changes everything under the circle icon to transparent, which is what the checkerboard pattern, the gray and white checkerboard pattern represents. But remember I said basically that's how it works. If that's all it did, it would be just like the regular eraser tool. I'm going to undo that with Command or Control Z. And notice the crosshairs inside the cursor circle? That's called the hotspot. And whatever color is directly under the hotspot when you click with it is the only color that will change to transparent. So if I move my cursor so that part of the circle is on the white wall and part is on my mother-in-law's hair and I click once you can see that just the part that just the color that was under the hot spot uh, turned to transparent and it left her hair unchanged. Let's look at another example to show how this um, hot spot idea works. If I place my cursor between the two subjects where there's various different colors within the circle and I click, you'll see that just the white wall goes to transparent because that's what was under the hot spot. All the other areas remain intact. These features make the background eraser tool useful for removing objects and subjects from the background. Let's do that with this photo, but first let's look at the settings we have in the options bar for the background eraser tool and I'm going to undo where I click there. So if we go up to the options bar, first we have the uh, brush presets and you can see what those are by clicking on this little white arrow. First there's a diameter slider that you can use to make the cursor circle larger or smaller. I think it's better to use the left and right bracket keys to change the size because you can see the brush size change and it's more interactive. The next slider is called hardness and that determines whether or not the edges of your cursor are feathered or not. I like to use 100% hardness most of the time. 
when I change the hardness to zero and then click, so if I slide that down to zero and then click, you can see how soft the edges are uh, around the area of my cursor. So let me undo that and go back into the presets, move the um, hardness up to 100%, and now when I click you can see I have a solid uh, edge to that circle. The next slider determines the space between your brush when you click and drag with it. 25% is generally a good setting. The last few settings are for fairly unusual situations and I'm not going to go into them here. So I recommend leaving them at their default settings. To close the presets, click anywhere on the options bar. The next field is called limits and you have two choices, contiguous and discontiguous. Contiguous means the clicked on color has to be touching the area under the hotspot to be affected and discontiguous means it doesn't. That's a little confusing but let me try to show you how, how that works. You can see if I place my hotspot over this gray lapel and click that all of, the per all of that particular gray color that was under my circle area change to transparent. Even on this other side of the blue color on over here on that side of the blue even though that wasn't touching the gray where I clicked it, it still changed it because I had that set to discontiguous. So let me undo that and now we'll change it to contiguous and I'll click in the same general area and now you can see that it didn't change on the other side of the blue because those two colors were not touching. And the last field in the options bar is the tolerance setting. This has to do with how close in color and tone an area has to be to the area right under the hotspot before it changes to transparent. The lower the number, the more similar it has to be. So you can see if I change this to like 60 something and I, I click on uh, that background color of the wall, it also made other dissimilar colors uh, transparent or at least semi-transparent because it had such a high tolerance setting that it included many other colors. So let me undo that and then I'm going to slide this back down to like I don't know, 11% or so. And now if I click on the wall, you can see that it just kind of included that area. If we wanted to get rid of the background around these two people, we could basically take our cursor and really all we have to do is get rid of the color where it butts up to the to our subjects because once we do that, then it's easy to separate them from the rest of the background. Probably leave it at the settings we have, and then I can just drag with it around them. And like if I go in there and just kind of click and drag on the areas I want to get rid of. It's really a pretty cool tool for getting rid of some of the background on your subjects. Okay, so you basically you just need to get the area right next to your subjects and then from there I could just grab um, my lasso tool and I could quickly go around both of my subjects here. I don't have to worry about getting on the edge of them. Okay, so right now I have both the people in the picture selected, but I want to select everything but the people. So if I go to the Select menu and um, click on Inverse, 
now the marching ants of my selection are on the outside. Press delete on a Mac or backspace on a PC and all that area goes to transparent. And now I'm going to deselect. And that's basically how the background eraser tool works. If you would like more free video tips, I have 20 essential Photoshop elements tips you can get started with right now by going to EssentialPhotoshopElements.com slash tips.